Okay, good, thank you. All right, well, let's do it. So I'm Jason, I'm a product manager at Tableau. I'm really excited for the session uh, for a few reasons, Tom being one of those. Um, we've been working together for quite a while and uh, our relationship at Tableau has evolved with SAP. I, I used to call us frenemies a few years ago um, because we had to get along when we had to. But um, you know, this year we had a, a quite a bit of things that uh, we had to go through to understand how Tableau and SAP need to make changes to work together better, and, and Tom will speak to that a little bit. But um, the session today, we have a, some really good content. Tom's gonna talk a little bit about the uh, ecosystem around HANA, and he's got some good content about the internals and, and to help you understand a little bit more about how the behaviors um, are the way they are. But uh, the other reason I'm super excited is this is just gonna be um, something we haven't done before. Having SAP at Tableau is kind of a big deal for me, and I'm, I'm really excited to have Tom here, so. Tom? Thank you. Um, yeah, so, uh, so my name's Tom Slee, as, as Jason said. I'm a product manager in the, in the HANA group. Um, he said there's been questions, how do you pronounce HANA, is it HANA, HANA? I guess the proper German is a, is a longer A, but the Anglo-Canadian, I will dictate, is, is a shorter A, so HANA. Um, and yeah, so, so uh, as Jason said, I think that the, the uh, relationship between SAP and, and Tableau has evolved over time. I mean, clearly the success of this conference and the success of Tableau and, and a couple of others over the last few years has meant there's been a shift in, in what people need. Companies are coming to us, customers are coming to us saying, you folks working with your own reporting tools is not enough. You know, you have to work with Tableau and you have to work with people in the business units who, who want to do analytics. And um, so uh, that creates some interesting incentives inside SAP. If you talk to some of my colleagues on the analytics side, hmm, not, so not so much. Uh, but for us on the, on the database side, you know, I mean, our business is to sell, to sell HANA, to sell databases. And, uh, and so, you know, our management said, Customers are telling us you need to work with Tableau. So, so now Jason is my best friend, and we, we talk all the time. <laughs> um, so. Uh, so, next thing is for me to work out how this goes. All right. Yes. So, um, you know, so this is it's, it's labeled as a best practices talk. I mean, that's and and that's a little ambitious. Um, a lot of variety of use cases, obviously, of people in this room. Um, but uh, I think. The first half, I think, is going to be, I'll skip right by that. The first half, I'm going to really cover a sort of orientation, like what do we mean talking to HANA anyway? Um, a little bit about internals, a little bit about the different kind of views are available. So we all know we're talking about the same thing. And then we'll talk about some of the problem areas. And Jason, in addition, has some material on Tableau optimizations and things that are possible. So it's really those two halves. So if it works well, then the first half will mean that we're all on the same page and we all know the landscape and we can all navigate that and the second half will take us into the specifics. You know, if it doesn't work well, then the first half will be too general and you don't need to know it so you can ignore it and the second half won't address your particular problem so you can ignore that too. But we have a number of breaks and we'll try to, to encourage, um, uh, I'll try to reset at those, those various types. But. Um, but the first section really is about uh, how people are using HANA and how they're using it with Tableau. So, um, but let's start off right at the beginning. Let's start, start off with HANA, and I just want to say a little word. So this is a more professional slide than the ones I put together. It's obviously put together by the marketing people, so uh, people who can draw. So, so a little bit about this. I don't want to go through the whole slide, but... It's, you'll see there in the middle, it says it's the business data platform for the intelligent enterprise, which is, a, which is a very broad and somewhat nebulous thing. So that's sort of HANA as a brand, if you like. But uh, and then they're trying to encompass a number of use cases there from real-time analytics down there, down to um, uh, so some uh, stuff about connecting to other data sources. Um, there's a whole uh, data hub initiative where we're trying to build out stuff to, to connectivity to data lakes and so on. Uh, so there's all those things, but in the end, as far as I think we're concerned here, it's a database, right? So, so that's, that's really what we're talking about. We're in memory, if you look at the top, in memory first, I mean, I think so, so clearly historically what's happened here is, is there's an opportunity, um, you know, five, five six, well, more, more like 10 years ago now, 
um, when, when SAP realized, you know, enterprise data sets can fit in memory, and that gives a chance to re-architect something, so to enter a database market with a different architecture. So, um, so that was, and hmm, I mean, I guess also then we don't have to give Oracle a whole bunch of money whenever we make a sale, which is probably weighed into it somehow. So, um, so, so then, so then, since then, there's been a big effort to build SAP applications on HANA and also to make it available as a, as a more general purpose database. So that's what we're trying to do. Um, but let me take you through some of the, the ways that different people, and I've talked to a few people in the audience that might be using this. Um, and anything with a green box is, is something that we'll be talking about today, right? But let's start off with that, um, uh, in a way, the, the first big claim that people, SAP, made for HANA was that you can do your uh, OLTP kind of applications, your transactional, your business suite applications, and then you can kind of do report, you can do reporting on that at the same time. You can do at least operational reporting on real-time data that you don't have to do the moving it somewhere else in order to do that reporting. So when business suite got put on HANA in the green box to the left, and I put a number of um, squares around HANA there because it, many people now have, have sort of multi-node systems. Um, then, then you put the, the data, but then obviously that's in thousands of tables and it's not a useful way to present data to anyone who's gonna do reporting. So then they present, provide a thing called um, uh, HANA Live calculation views that you can put on top of those so that that provides a level in which um, reporting applications can interface with it. And those calculation views are accessible, you know, through SQL, uh, straight from the HANA database. That's the one on the left. So you can try to do operational reporting, real-time analytics that way. When it came to S4 HANA, which is like the next generation of, of ERP applications, um, that was a, a whole re-architecture. Um, re re reorganized the schema underneath, big effort to do that. And so they kind of went back to first principles. and. Uh, and what they did was they, they tried to say, all right, we're, we're doing all this, we're gonna use a different technology to provide that reporting. They, they develop a thing called embedded analytics. The technology they use is, is what they call CDS views, core data service views. There are two flavors of that, and the one they're using is called ABAP CDS views, which means they're defined in the application server in, in, in the S4 part, if you like, of S4 HANA. Um, those generate SQL views, but uh, they don't recommend that people access it through there. So in general, if you're doing reporting on S4 HANA, you're probably doing it through, um, through an OData interface or something to the application server. And uh, I, I know that um, uh, there's ongoing conversations about that, but uh, that's, that's how I've been told it should work. Um, then let's look about, if you're not doing that, that operational reporting, suppose you're doing more, more long-term strategic tactical planning, you might have BW on HANA. Um, and there, um, again, you've got the two options. You can either go on the right, you can go um, through, B, through BW to do those queries and run VEX queries against HANA, or uh, BW in, ends up generating these calculation views in HANA, and then you can access those directly through SQL. And uh, I guess Tableau goes both ways, is that right? Okay, so uh, you can do both, but I'm a, I'm, we're only gonna talk about the left-hand one here. We're talking, because I, I, I don't speak for BW, I just speak for the HANA side of this, this conversation. So you've got those, and then the, the final one really is the sort of data mart where it's just a standalone database. And th this is a, an, a um, this is a, uh, uh, loosely modeled on, on a big customer. So, I mean, what that means is you've got other applications, you suck data into HANA for reporting purposes, and then that's what it's for. It's just you, you, you're making it available to the various teams to do their reporting, right, so, and, and their analytics, and, and busy, I guess, is that the right thing? Yeah. Whatever the kids call it now, right, so. Um, so, um, so this is based on, on something that one of our bigger customers, obviously. So they have, like, each node is like two terabytes. They have two, the first system on the left there is, uh, is basically you're sucking out all the data in from all their, all their enterprise systems, and they're not SAP systems. They're sucking it in there, and then they'll do ELT or, or transformation work in there. And then they'll move it into a second set of five two terabyte nodes where they'll do all their uh, core reporting, you know, financials and that kind of thing. Um, 
And then uh, they have, like a lot of other companies, a, a demand for reporting from the, the business units, which is more what you folks do here. And they have a whole other set of five or six, five, I think, two terabyte nodes for, for them to do that. So, so they've got this sequence of three systems, each multi-node, to provide reporting access to the whole, to the whole company. Um, and, uh, and obviously it's that far right one that's of interest here. So I hope that kind of gets, just get, gets us a little bit oriented. We, ha we have the, the sort of the, the S4 and suite on HANA kind of use case. We have the BW stuff for reporting, and we have the standalone case. And then when you get down to HANA then, so you're talking to HANA from Tableau, um, it is in, in many ways just a database, as I say, but like anything else, it has its, it has its quirks and its own kind of histories. So, so it's a regular SQL database. You can do create view, and you can create views, and then you can expose those to your users as you'd like. We also have a set of uh, sort of an ORM kind of approach called Core Data Services, uh, which CDS views you can define in HANA. In the end, that comes down to the same thing, roughly speaking. In the end, it's SQL views. But then what most people end up using is actually neither of those. What most people end up using is these things called calculation views, which come more from the VW world. And they are um, uh, their views in that you can query them. Um, they are, if you're going to develop them, you, you have two ways, and I'll go through that in a minute. But um, because of their history in an OLAP kind of world, they do have built into them some of these notions of dimensions and measures that go beyond the sort of the tuples and so on of, of straight SQL. And as a result, there's a little bit of a, a mismatch between, if you, if you like, between calculation views and SQL, and that's something that we have to deal with, and that's, I'll talk about that at the end if we ever get there. And then, so there's two approaches to doing that that you might have seen. I'll call them HANA 1.0 calculation views, but they're supported in HANA 2, which is the current, you know, so, so we had HANA 1, and then a few years ago went to HANA 2, which has had various SPS releases over time, but HANA 2 is still where we are. Um, so they're supported in both, um, but if you're developing those, you're doing so, and some people over here I know are talking about being modelers developing those, so you're doing that in HANA Studio, and if you're requiring, querying it, you'll see all, all those views are stored in a schema called sysbic, and the, the metadata is in a different schema, sysbi. Um, and that's the kind of thing that BW does. And, and so that's where, I think that's, that top right corner is where most people are right now who are doing this kind of work. Um, we do also have, in HANA 2, introduced a new way of doing calculation views. Um, using uh, things called HDI containers, which basically means each view and each user has their own, has their own separate schema. I'm not gonna go through that, but if you're using that, you're, you're using WebIDE, which is the development tool that, that people use for that now, and you're using uh, a technology called XSA. Doesn't matter if you don't recognize it. If you don't recognize it, you're not using it, so it's okay. Um, but I just wanted to say that our these sort of slightly modified forms of calculation views. Semantically, they're the same, but the metadata is still in, in SysBI, but each, each calculation view is stored in, in what we call its own container. So there's a different security model, a more elaborate security model around that. Um, so I think those are the ways that you access it, but most of the time we can think of it as really the top right, right? You're really going through calculation views, I think, for most people. Um, and what we find is that a lot of people that build, spend a lot of time building calculation views, and some of you will know this better than I do, um, where you have a set of base tables for your application, whether that, what, no matter what those applications are, and then there's a set of views that are built on top of that, typically owned by, by IT, typically owned centrally. But you might have each business unit, in some places they'll have a person who's you good at this stuff who can spend their time developing views specifically for that business unit. And so you have business unit specific views as the top layer that, uh, that Tableau users will query. And uh, that same kind of layering thing happens um, in, the, in the other kind of ones that I saw, BW for HANA and Suite on HANA. Here, uh, BW will generate the first ones or that HANA Live content will, pr will provide the first layers those base layers, and then people will customize those as they wish on top of that. 
So it's, it ends up being a big thing. You end up with these views with 300 tables underneath them. Um, and so uh, that's, in the end, what we're trying to query. And um, so that's, I, I think, usually these are big efforts. Usually the data that's in there, security matters. Usually the queries are going to be complex. Usually there's going to be strict performance requirements. In the end, this is, this is often a challenge to meet all those goals at once, and I guess that's why, that's why we're here. If, they, if it was easy, you wouldn't need a best practices talk. So, um, uh, so what that means, though, is that I am going to spend, if you like, most of the rest of this about talking about what's wrong, right? talking about where things are difficult and talking about things. But I don't want to have you walk out of here feeling down. I don't want you to feel like, oh, like there, there, there is hope, right? So. Um, just because that, that's what we're talking about. It doesn't mean that a lot doesn't work, right? And, and I think, as Jason says, part of the, the thing has been over time that the Tableau side has made a lot of improvements to how do they do things. We try to refine some of the, uh, some of the things that are happening on HANA, and I, I think um, uh, the overall story is, is much cheerier than uh, what I'm just it, It's probably worth mentioning, Tom. SAP came to Tableau, and, and we kind of did a show and tell of, of how our query engine works and how mm -hmm. their query processing works. And we realized we had a lot of the same problems, that we had, <laughs> had, had backed ourselves into some of the same corners. So it's, it's cool to see that we can work together on that. Cool. So, um, so let's look at the internals of HANA and how that affects what you're doing. So, so first, the, the main process, if you look in the, in the uh, and we call it an index server for historical reasons, but that's just a, that's the main database server process. And like, it's, it's like any other database, and it's not. Right? So it's like it in that any query that comes in goes through three rough layers. You've got this parse and preparation phase, where it's going to understand the query, transform it as necessary. It goes to an optimization phase, and then it goes through an execution phase, and then if you're lucky, you get results out. And um, if, if you've seen the query before, you might be able to skip some of those phases if you're lucky, if, if things have been cached in a way that you can do that. Right. So that's, that, that's pretty much like anything. But what's a little unusual here is that you have, if you look on those green boxes, you have sort of the two columns. You have down the left-hand side, SQL parser and optimizer, SQL parser and compiler, SQL optimizer, execution plan, send it to a SQL engine and get the result set. And that's, pretty much HANA as a SQL database. But if you're using calculation views, things are a little different because the semantics are a bit different. So they have their own, the, the calc engine has its own optimizer. It can pass things down to a calc engine down there that will do its own execution. Or nowadays we'll do what's called unfolding, which is um, basically pass it back to the SQL engine for processing. But we do end up with, internally, they get called engines, these different parts of the process. Um, I think the only thing that we need to know about that is if you go from one engine to another, you're having to parcel up a bunch of stuff, hand it over, re restructure it in a different data format, and then move it on from there. So there's always overhead uh, going between these different parts of the application. So let's start off. Let's start off with... Uh, and really what I want to say here, the next couple of slides, is just some areas where you may have seen problems and where, with luck, we've been making improvements over time. So if you get the, get the latest, maybe you'll, maybe you'll see some improvements. So, so let's start off at the top with SQL parser and compiler. And what we found is that certainly it was some of these very big views um, with lots of analytical privileges on them. Doing that initial preparation involves checking privileges at every stage, involves doing all that, um, uh, un unraveling all those you know, mo many, many, many tables that are going on. So that process itself can be very time consuming. We have seen cases where it's like 40 seconds to do the preparation and a couple of seconds to execute, which is not, not the normal way I'd think of, of these things. But, um, that has been a, a, a bottleneck for some, for, for some queries. Um, and it can be even more uh, a bottleneck if you have a multi-node system, because there's a sort of a little back and forth that I'll come to later, where it might have to be compiled at multi more than one node. And each time, you're going you're gonna to end up going through this long process. So we have made a lot, put in a lot of work 
we, I mean, not me, but other people, have put in a lot of work to, to reduce the compilation time for some of those problematic cases. Um, I think you'll see that will lead to a better performance on more recent versions. And many of those changes have been moved back to, all right, so the in-market versions, we have HANA 1, what we call SPS 12. I don't know how you folks refer to it, but that's, we have this, that's the in-market version of, of HANA 1. And then HANA 2, we're on SPS 03 now. But this has been pushed back to the HANA 1 stuff as well. And then um, to avoid the, the uh, routing problem, uh, that we also do a, a thing called lightweight compilation, which just means you can quick check where should, which node should this be executed on without doing the whole, whole compiling and pass it on. So we hope to have removed some bottlenecks there. Um, another area where we've seen bottlenecks has been uh, caching. Um, as I say, it's not so much a problem if you have to do a lot of work, if you only have to do it once, but if you have to do it every time, then it starts to, to really get in the way. Um, and proper caching and effective caching is, is, is the best way to avoid that. Um, we have had limitations in that. Um, there's been some incompatibilities that maybe Jason might want to talk to later or about, um, about, uh, about uh, the way Tableau doing things and the way HANA doing things not really mixing together so that we ended up missing a lot of things in the cache. I think that's the, the short version of the story. Do you want to talk about that now or do you want to? Yeah, okay. What are you talking about? There's a, a capability that exists in 2018-3 that I, ca I can, uh, it's not in my deck, but I can get it to you guys. Um, that is basically to turn on um, prepared statements and parameter binding. And what the difference that does is instead of Tableau sending a full text query that they have to treat as a, a net new query every time, that we actually parameterize the query, give them the pre prepare statement properly, and they can um, reuse the query cache much more effectively. It, it's once you put it on a TDC on server and, it, and it'll get you there. It, we've seen in especially multi-node environments, it makes a massive difference. Thank you. And uh, we've made a couple of changes on our own side as well. So one of the changes is that the plan cache was not shareable among users for some time in HANA 1, but that's been relaxed. So now it's, now it's shared among multiple users. So that should increase the reuse rate of that cache. And uh, better caching for users with analytical privileges, which is basically all users. So that's, that's probably a good thing too. Um, all right, so I think really what that does is that that's kind of the first half. Where are we? Um, 10, 10 to, okay, that's not too bad. Um, so that's in a way the first half. That's like, what's the landscape? Um, what are the different versions of HANA out there? What are the different use cases? And what happens when a query goes through it? Um, so now I think we're gonna go on to a set, should I just carry on onto the, the three? So, so I'm gonna talk a bit about, um, if you're a Tableau user, you're running into problems, you start to use custom SQL. Let's talk about performance on that. And then uh, we'll talk a little bit about query distribution uh, for people with multi-node systems. And then I'll finish up with a bit about calculation semantics. And if you're still awake, then Jason will fill on with um, some things on, on Tableau uh, to wake you up again. But. So let's, let's start. So, so, you, so you have performance problems, so what do you do? So, so I think I mean, the rough side of this is you've got tools in Tableau, uh, performance recordings and tools to analyze the logs, and maybe there are others that I don't know of, um, but tools to, to analyze the Tableau side. In HANA, we have uh, a log that's called the expensive query log, which you can, expensive statements trace that you can turn on and then uh, that basically records details of every, tr every statement that's longer than a certain cutoff time that you specify. And then uh, you can query that by querying this view, uh, this expensive statements view. Um, so then what you've got to do, of course, is match those two together. Um, uh, you've got to find out, so, so you've got to find, find what it is in your uh, dashboards that you can filter on and so then you can query the state expensive statements to see what, what, what statements are taking the time. Um, and it might be something that people can do with the application ID that you provide as well, but I don't know the details of that. So, so, but that, uh, so that, that will be a, w at, least, at least a starting point for, for tracking down problems between Tableau and HANA. And once you know what it is that's causing the problem, well, what can you do about it, you know? So, um, 
really you've got the two types of places that you can deal with things. You've got the Hanna side of the world and you've got the Tableau side of the world. So uh, the Hanna side of the world, we're mainly talking here about, well, what can you do in the calculation view to tweak it so that it's behaving better, so it's going faster? Uh, are there options you can turn on and so on that you can do that? And then on the Tableau side, uh, if you're doing custom SQL, uh, uh, HANA SQL has a hints clause that you can do. And so there are often hints you can do to sort of override the calculation view side. So uh, I'm going to go through a few of these. And uh, then, as I say, these tips may change over time because to some extent, these are all intended to, to work around limitations of you know, what it can do automatically. And as we hope that what, what HANA will deal with automatically gets better over time, some of these may no longer be used. But uh, for 2018, anyway, uh, this is the case. So one thing is uh, join, you have a big query. You have join, many joins in it. You can indicate what we call the join cardinality as you're developing your calculation views. You, know, you don't have to, but you can. And what we're saying is it's important to, especially if it's a, uh, as in the case on the right, a many to one. Uh, I mean, the main benefit of this is that under certain circumstances, quite common circumstances, if it's a, a many to one or a one to one join, it can speed up execution dramatically. Um, there was a Tableau session where you were talking about a similar kind of thing. We call it join pruning. You call it join culling, I think, which is far more aggressive. I mean, pruning is like, you know, build it, make roses nice. Culling is like, kill, uh, kill baby seal, I don't know. But anyway, so, um, but I think it comes down to the same thing, right? You, what you want to do is you don't want to go out to, to tables you don't really need to go out to. Um, so, and if you have like a star schema and you've got a lot of dimension tables and you're really querying on the, on the fact table, but you've got conditions that are on the worker, depending on if, if it's a many to one join, you might not even have to look at those dimension tables is what it comes down to, right? So if that's the case, then Hannah can do what it's good at, which is going through a lot of rows very quickly, or a lot of, you know, because it's column stored, go through a lot of those very quickly uh, and use a lot less memory. So that is worth saying, pay attention to join cardinality and see what you do. Now, if you're on, I know that some of the barriers to, the, to, to getting these two to work together are going to be organization. You've got IT folks over there. You've got the Tableau users over here. And if you're a Tableau user, well, what can you do about what's in the calculation view? You know, not, maybe not very much. Um, uh, so, so what you can do, though, is you can, at least for diagnostic purposes, use hints in your query to see if it's if it's causing problems. Right. So, there's a. F um, so, so first, if you if you're going to do the join cardinality, you have to get it right, because Hannah is going to take that what you tell about it. If you say it's a one to one and it's actually a one to many, it's not going to go looking up those other ones. So. So it, it, it follows what you do in that case. Um, so if you want to check whether you've got it right, or if you check whether um, there are performance things as a result, that you can just supply this hint in your query and a couple of options there. And these slides will be made available afterwards, so you don't have to copy all these down. But the point is from the Tableau side, there's something you can do at least to indicate where, the pro where, where performance problems might be um, and possible solutions. So um, a few others. I'm just going to go through these, right? So this is just like, um, so if you see a slide, it's like, no, that's not me. Then you can just wait to the next slide, and we'll see, see how that goes. So uh, one is just um, very simple typecasting. So again, I mean, one of the main things is that in the end, Hannah's is very good about going, going through lots of, lots of values very quickly. But if you've got to do operations on each of these values, then you know, less of a benefit. What can I say? So it has an order of data types that it will supply, and it'll always convert lower ones to higher ones, and date is at the top, uh, or is close to the top. And so if you've got a, if you've got a column that has, see, says select from T, where date string, if you've got a, a dates in a, in a character column, which is very common in an SAP system, and you're comparing that to the current date as a date, you're gonna take all those bar char columns and you're gonna convert them all to strings, and all, all to dates in order to do that comparison. So that's going to slow it down. So you can do a couple of things there. One is you can explicitly say your comparison value, put it into a, into a character type right away, 
And then it doesn't have to do the, the, the conversion on all the, all the values it fetches from the database. Um, or of course, you can also do, you could also add an extra column. If you can't do that, you can, well, you can do that. But if you, uh, another way would be si to simply uh, generate an extra column to avoid that typecasting entirely. And, and so I think um, not a complicated fix, uh, but for some people it makes a significant difference. So really it's just a scattering of, of the kind of things that we've, we've seen people come through. <sighs> Joins is another area. So I'm probably gonna go through a couple of these and then avoid because otherwise, really, there's only so many join predicates I can look at without going on. So um, again, it's a matter, all right, I should set the stage for this a little bit. I showed you these various engines and that was a little simplified. HANA also, I mean, the, the, the benefit is really if it can store stuff in columns, it can do compression, it can do indexing, it can do fast retrieval, and that's, and that's great. But it is trying to be an OLTP database as well, and for OLTP purposes, putting stuff in by rows uh, is often the quickest way. So, so it kind of has a row table representation internally and a column table internally. And because they're different, there are functions that are ve things that you can do in the row table that you can't do in the column table yet. So, so there are transformations between row representations and column tables. And if you do an explain plan, you can kind of see this. Um, then, uh, and that's, and so what you wanna do is try to avoid putting operations into your query that's gonna cause HANA to move stuff between a row and a column representation, because that's, be, that's gonna be time consuming. Right? So, so, things that HANA, so this is really a list of things that HANA cannot do in the column representation. Um, so, join predicates, um, if, you have, uh, if you have things that are not equijoins, not equals, then that tends to be challenging for HANA in the, in the column representation. So if you've got betweens, um, and you can rephrase those as a set of equals, then it is probably wise to do so. Um, so the between is in red, is a thing that's basically gonna prompt a transformation into a row engine, and then and it will slow it down. If you can rephrase that as, as a, um, with a, a, an equals, then you may well be better off. Couple of other things in red here. So one is this, you know, calculations if you've got parameters in, in the where clause there, in, or in the join condition there, in the on clause, then that's not gonna be good. And if you've got some, some expressions which refer to other tables, then that's also, so, so a number of these. Again, I'm not gonna go through them. You either have them or you don't, but the point is I think it's worth looking at your SQL. It's worth look, taking a little time to go through what the explain plan says, says it's doing and it's worth taking a look at whether there are movements there between the, the column store and the row store. Um, we've seen enough of join predicates. Um, the same thing, in a way, goes for exists and in predicates. So again, we've got uh, a couple of examples here, which you can read when we're, uh, if you look at it on, on uh, when you get the slides. Um, uh, I know, it is what it is. So exists. Exists is generally a quicker operation than ins, and you want to avoid lists of ins. I mean, I think that's all of it. All right, enough of that. Query routing, completely different topic. Let's start again. All right, so now, um, just, just out of curiosity, I, I'm a little curious as to, to what proportion of people have a multi-node HANA system. Uh, so people using multi-nodes, so I would say that's 20% you know, or so. People with single-node HANA systems, we're talking 10% or so, of people who don't know, don't care, 70% uh, <laughs> okay, right. Okay, all right, so, so let's talk about multi-node systems. So the key thing to think here, I mean, there's nothing magic going on. You've got different nodes and you've got different data on different nodes and you wanna stop it moving around. But there's two real problems here. So one is you wanna do some, the, you really want load balancing of queries. You, uh, as a minimum, you want to balance the, balance the load on the different nodes. So if you have all your clients talking to a single node and it's doing queries on data that is scattered around the other nodes, then that node is gonna be fetching tables across the network 
um, doing those queries, allocating large amounts of memories, that node is going to fall over in, and is in short. So, so, so what you want to do is you want to, um, at, the, at the very least, distribute uh, connections and queries across different nodes in the system right, to, 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 to spread the load. So there's a couple of ways you can do that. So, so, but in the end, there's, a, there's a, a configuration parameter on the HANA side that will tell it to do that. And then any connection attempt, um, when the client connects, it gets back various information. And so the connection is a, is a fairly complicated handshake. So uh, it has, in this index server, you, you can set a distribution mode to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spread around that load. So, so at least avoid the problem of everything going through a single node. But you can do better than that. Uh, you'd hope to do better than that. So let's look at, you know, when we've got this kind of thing, what have we got? Uh, right, so that, I mean, this is what you want to avoid. When you're talking about individual queries, what you want to avoid is going to a node, requesting the table from somewhere else, coming back, and then feeding the node back, right? That's what you want to avoid. So. Um, in, if you have prepared statements, then there's a, pro, there's a handshake that goes on. So the first one, it says, I'll send, actually, I've said prepared statements, and I don't really have any parameters here, but you can prepare a statement even if it doesn't have parameters, but it's not common. But, so you can do that. So you say, send the prepare to, the, to your, your uh, anchor node, and it sends back various information and basically says, you know what? You should go to node two to execute this query. And then the client will connect to node, to node two in that next step, execute the query there. Um, uh, and so that's the sequence that it goes through. And so uh, two things about that. One is it means that the query is getting compiled on both there. So we've made some improvements for that. Um, but secondly, that things are going to be a lot better if you can use prepared statements. And that's what Jason was talking about. There's been a bit of a mismatch between Tableau and HANA in that for a while. Uh, which is now getting resolved, and so we should no longer really see these kinds of problems to the same degree. And the, the TDC change I mentioned is really right now in, in 2018.3. We intend to make that the default setting. We just have some more testing to do. Cool. So I think that, that will help people a lot. Um, in the absence of that, if you can't use that, then we do st still have some other things that we've put in that help distribute. Um, there's notions that when you first make a connection, you have a thing called an anchor connection. But there's also, as you execute various commands on the connection and you start various transactions, each transaction starts at a node that it will call the primary node. And so at the end of that transaction, it's going to do some choose another primary node. And it's got a couple of options to how to choose it. Uh, one is to always go back to the anchor node. Another one is to go where you last, uh, where the previous primary node. And one that may be more interesting for people is to go to this last execute. So basically that says, you know, wherever you ended up executing last time, let's start there so we don't have to run into, with any luck, the, the redistribution problems. So it's, um, these are uh, options that are connection options that are available in recent HANA clients. HANA clients work with all this, all older servers. So I think these are some things that if you have um, multi-node systems might be worth looking at. And um, as I said, we have this thing where the compilation phase can be uh, time consuming. So you make a query, it gets prepared. It says, oh no, go over to the other node. So it goes over there, but then it has to be prepared again before it's executed. So that, that's what I was saying earlier about compilation times being really uh, doubly, or can be, can, you can pay twice for those if you're not careful. Um, so we do now have uh, a lightweight preparation phase, where in that first one it just says, okay, I'm just going to take a quick look, <coughs> see where you should execute this without unpacking it entirely. And again, there's a server setting um, that lets you, lets you set that. Um, so where are we? A little bit about, is it time for me? I think, is it better, do you want to leave time for... Why don't I skip over this? You t say a little bit about Tableau. There are some. Yeah, the, the whole thing would be online. That's just calculation view semantics if we want to go back to it. 
Um, here's some useful documents. They'll be there online that I've referred, that basically say what I've been saying. Um, and why don't we go with the Tableau for a while? Here are different quotes. A very different approach to content. Mine is very terse. I have some uh, some tips of things that you can do to to make HANA, and in some cases, just generally, your uh, experience better with performance. So, let's take a look at first um, metadata cache. So, one of the things that if you're using single sign-on with uh, Tableau and HANA, you notice that we don't share caches at all. So, there's a performance hit in that case. And some of our customers had customers that came back and said, "I get that for the query data itself, but what about the metadata?" Because HANA can be you know, pretty chatty with Tableau getting metadata, especially if you're using a lot of filters and things like that. So we've added this feature um, that today is a TDC session, because it, a TDC, because it's something that you really need to, to understand and opt into um, from your security team perspective. But what you see here is query cache, metadata cache. In a normal non-SSO connection, you get both, obviously. SSO connection, you get neither, but there is a scenario where you can get the metadata cache shared. And to do that, it's, it's pretty simple. Uh, I put the TSM uh, configuration here. There's also a way to do it via the old school uh, config file. I don't want to feed back on you guys. But it's pretty simple. You make the TSM change. The force keys option is only required right now because this is a really new setting. Once they kind of get TSM updated, you won't need that anymore. Um, that's just your way of saying that I know what I'm doing, trust me. Um, apply and restart. So basically, what you see here is with the default cache behavior, the first user would, would I don't need to read all that. You guys know that stuff, how that works. Uh, disabled, you get all misses, and with shared, the first user will have the, the performance hit, and then as we keep ma making these uh, successive metadata calls, you won't get hit for that. I did add a link here at the bottom for more information on how to use TSM, um, if you haven't used that before. And again, if, you're, if you'd rather have the, uh, the YAML way, just let me know, I can get that to you as well. Um, yep, yeah, I've already uploaded what we have here exactly, so. Um, SAML assertions, so if you're using SAML today with HANA, um, we don't encrypt the actual insertions, assertions for SAML, so this is a, a quick TDC setting that you can make to make sure that um, we're encrypting those things. Um, once for server, obviously, but you would need to put this on desktop if you have that on several, but it really just enables the encryption channel and again, I've added a little link there um, for how to deal with TDC files. The, the asterisk there is just that you have to have SSL enabled on HANA server for this to work. Okay, extracts and calculations. This is one I thought was pretty interesting because I know a lot of, of uh, HANA users are using extracts in certain scenarios, and I found this out as I was kind of researching what we wanted to talk about for, for, for performance. So I kind of laid out a scenario. IT's published a Tableau connection to HANA for users to consume. Views that support the published connection don't contain the calculations that you need, so you create workbooks that you create the calculations at the workbook level. That's fine, but due to the way that the, the extract behavior works, there are a few issues. The first one is that at this point, Tableau Data Server just doesn't know about the calculations that are in the workbook. So, and when you build that extract, we still will have to run those calculations on your server, you know, taking bandwidth on your server um, CPU cycles. Uh, the other thing is that any calculations that exist on the published data source are materialized and those calculations are not. So the change here that you can make um, is simple. You can do two ways. Work with IT to ensure all the calculations are the public connection, not always your choice. The other is to embed the connection in the workbook. When you embed the connection in the workbook, then the extract creation process knows about all those calculations and can materialize all those columns for you. Um, makes a big difference if you're using a lot of different calculations. And that is it. That was quick. Um, there was one other thing though I wanted to mention that John pointed out to me that kind of played into what Tom was talking about earlier, which is the parameter binding thing. And we were, we were working with uh, one of our cust shared customers a year ago now, I guess at least, and they were uh, having a lot of issues because they had HANA views that had hundreds of tables underneath them and they would get to cases where it would just take a tremendously long time to calculate that. So we started initially by kind of making a quick and dirty way to make sure that we were doing the right thing for strings and ints. And we've since uh, expanded that to support all the data types and also to do the prepare statements properly for HANA. So the, um, the capability that you need to put in the TDC, I didn't have uh, time to get up on the deck, but I will try to get that updated. But it's the same thing if you put that on server, it can make a really big difference in um, just the responsiveness of HANA. I mean, we have a lot of people that will 
be frustrated that Tableau kind of gets you to that loading thing and you have to sit for a little while before anything happens and you can actually work in the uh, environment. So it's a good fix for that. Um, that's really the core content, but I wanted to leave some time for questions because yeah. it's the first time we've had uh, Tom here. So does anybody have any questions about HANA or Tableau on HANA? Somebody does. Okay. You want to just tell me I can repeat it? Okay. All right. When ask Tableau when they're going to fully support HANA 2.0 XSA2. That is something we are working on today. It, it, it is, uh, well, not today as far as Tableau, but um, <laughs> there, there was a, a change in the schema um, location of some of the objects that uh, when you use the XSA container, so we're working on making that change now. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't think that it would be in. That may be maintenance release. Actually, get a card after, and I, and I can let you know. Um, yeah. I, as a speaking from the outside, it, it it shouldn't be a big change. Right. So so I wouldn't. It's not. That's a whole, why I was yeah. thinking it's probably. I don't want to give you a full release because it's probably something we can put in the maintenance. But release. I can give you false expectations because it's Tableau <laughs> software. So he commits me to all kinds of stuff. Should be easy. You got a question? And it only happens in the SSO scenario? Yeah. So the question, I think, was there, there are users who are using SSO, and what they're seeing, I mean, to simplify, yeah. is not reflecting their privileges if they're not part of the public group. Is that? There's two yeah. users. One doesn't have public role in HANA. Mm -hmm. They're both SSO users. The second user does have public role in HANA. The user that doesn't have public role is seeing all the hidden fields for that calculation. Mm. I have a case Get me, get, let's, I'll get you a card. Give me the case number and, and we, can, uh, we can press on that. I, so, so I'm gonna take other questions, but I, I wanna say one thing. It's like, I, I am very interested in hearing from anyone who has HANA and Tableau use cases. So my email's on there. Feel free if you wanna just drop me a line and say, you know what, we're using it, here's how we're using it. I'd love to hear from you, so feel free. Yes, so, uh, no, you, yep. So you say, so, so you're getting locked out, connections locked out, is this from desktop, by the way, or is this from, so, um, it sounds, so you're, you're somehow getting frequent, so I, all I know, do, I, all I do know, I don't understand the first part of what you said about that IT is telling you that you can have a single. Yeah. It's fine. So it's not the number of sessions that's the problem. It's, I mean, you don't get a connection. <laughs> <laughs> I, so, so all I do know from my, my personal experience of, of similar kinds of things is that um, for me it's always been that there's a hidden connection with an old password somewhere on some other device that's trying it. But you're shaking your head. You're saying that's not the case. Um, I, 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 <laughs> I don't really know what to say. Again, I'm happy to take a, take a card and we can follow that up. But, uh,
on server. Uh, we're working on that. So the uh, the way that prompts was implemented originally, we tried to do something smart, which was to have an implementation for both BW and HANA that, that was really the same implementation. And the way that that was built was kind of tactically by what we call the tech partners team at the time, and it was not completely thought through. So what we're trying to do right now, I, I can tell you actually why that happens, is basically when you when you connect, we do what we call a full world update. We pull back all of the data. And in that update, we find out about prompts. And then we have to pass those prompts and get it all again, which is why you see that experience. And you shouldn't see that on desktop. But uh, we're looking right now at a full new implementation of prompts for HANA specifically. <laughs> so we can take care of that scenario, take care of scenarios like um, I want to one filter that dimension, that one drop down that filters the next as you go through prompts and those types of things. Um, it's a little bit tied to some of the work we're doing for Tableau Prep, um, so it's not gonna be immediate, but it's definitely something we're working on. Maybe I can suggest that um, and people are starting to drift out, so why don't we, why don't we say end, end it here, but we, we'll stay here, or at least sure. I can, you know, we'll stay here for people. So if you've got other questions, do come up and just chat with us. But thanks you for your time, thanks yeah. for spending Thank time you. with us. Thanks.